By the way, here we are with the 1600 plus group stage. Lucas Dukas, very nice and early forward in the Persians here. What could that mean, I wonder? Picking Persians against Mayans here. <laughs> he's scouting the enemy. Oh, so he's not even snagging the sheep. Come on, at least snag the sheep. There's two sheep here to be taken. Uh, so it could mean a lame, yes. But being the Persians. And losing a builder to wildlife, sadly. Uh, I am hoping for a douche here. There is this names. Lucas, Lucas, I believe I have casted a game of you performing a trash into douche on, uh, on Arena versus Beowulf. So I have uh, high hopes here for some kind of crazy Dark Age play, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what uh, happens here. I uh, don't mind douching the Persians. They are such an OP, stupid eco synth that uh, I'd take any win against Persian any day. It's a very early rush though, so uh, uh, maybe my douche dreams are already broken. No wood for a douche here. Sad time, sad time. Sorry I didn't see that. I was too busy looking at the scout already scouting enemy base. But one builder, two militia, one scout. They're definitely going to deny this Rhino here. And... Uh, Alright. It's going to kill the Rhino at enemy base here. So we're denying some food off the mines here. Shenshenko must be out of his mind already. Be so annoyed. Militia here, they are bonus attack against Eagle, by the way. Infantry against Eagles, they should shred that one. And uh, trying to bring in the boar here, but uh, Lucas Dukas got the aggression going on, so he's going to kill that rhino outside of Shenshenko's base, unless Shenshenko can somehow get to the villager first, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Unless the rhino is de aggroed somehow, but the militia here, this is Dark Age aggression big time here. <laughs> oh, the militia still alive, getting the last hit on the eagle. Shenshenko is now blind, it's not going to be able to scout the opponent's side, and that rhino is going down. It's important now to get the last hit emit army because then uh, Shenshenko can't harvest this for a distance. Let it be said though that Luca, uh, Lucas Dukas has a builder forward and, and against the Bayans starting with an additional builder that's essentially Shenshenko with a much more fluent and efficient economy already. Uh, two villagers lead, it seems slightly higher idle this time, and Shenshenko is even going to commit to taking out this villager if he can. He's chasing it, and he, he can afford to do that. He has two and a half villagers lead at this point, because of the mines bonus, and uh, and the fact that this guy hasn't been working to bring in Eco at all. It sucks to lose a Rhino with any Sim, but if any Sim can recover from that, it's the Mayans, because they... They gain uh, their resources last 15% longer. So the ostrich will bring in slightly more food, the sheep or goats will bring in more food, the berries, everything lasts longer. Oh, Shenshenko Pro in the chat as well. I'll take my guesses as to which player you are. <laughs> Welcome. Three builders committed. This is actually value for Lucas. Uh, Grace leadoff. He's lost one builder to to Rhino, so that's why he's uh, more than two builders behind at this point, and then the builder leaves. But that's a lot of idle time for the three Mayans builders as well. We'll see how this plays out for Lucas Dukas here. Certainly gets the plants disturbed here, but the barracks is up. Could be maybe a minute arms for Shenshenko here now, if it's not just the straight archers after all. And the barracks sort of just in case. We'll see. Fuel Lich is on the way at least. And even losing that rhino, Shenshenko is going up before Lucas Dukas here. And uh, we'll be able to make some... Nice counter aggression as the fuel age kicks in here. See the food count for Lucas Dukas. Still got a while, while to go until that fuel age click.
There is. Ah, the hunt apparently. Fairly on the safe side for Lucas Ducas here. But he farms because of lack of food from all the action going on, I guess. These are just palisades, nothing to see here. And Militia in the making for Shoshenko, so it's going to be the Mentarps. I don't know I don't know if you can even call it a build order Shoshenko, <laughs> but it did, uh, did mess up uh, the Mayans nice and early there. And now the French language is here. Shoshenko a progressé vers la feudal. So Feudal Age is in for Shenchenko here. French Connection would be the clan or team name here. We've had French Connection teams in my uh, tournaments before, team game tournaments. Oh yeah, yeah, but uh, the Persians uh, instant rush can actually be done with the Persians as well. The, uh, because of the extra 50 food and 50 wood, it's doable, but it's going to cost you some idle time because you'll, unless you find your Rhino in the first second, you'll struggle big time, big time to uh, to keep your TC running. Persians can definitely do it. Or if you want to go a real early rush but not take that much of a drain on your economy, you could do the pre lumber camp rush instead. You just get the eco rolling a little bit, and then you uh, then you build the barracks before the lumber camp. Take stragglers and then you can build the lumber camp, and then you just play it as normal. And it catches people off guard. I never expected from the Persians. I challenge you to try it with the slabs as well, Lucas Ducas. <laughs> because of the uh, pop space of the barracks or the buildings. Uh, slabs get 5 pop space per military building, right? So you only need to build one house. So you save 25 wood on the on that house at least but uh, food is going to be a big issue though <laughs> huge gold investment for lucas lucas in the back here and that's outside of shenshenko scouting i think he has the first uh, mayans archer out here he has the at arms pushing the lumber camp here gold is on the safe side though i wonder if lucas lucas wants to trade towards the Whatever it needs here, honestly. We'll need the market to do so, though. The range is up. Lucas Dukas making archers of his own. But also taking losses here. Only one builder lost, and that's to the rival for now. But that's a very weak one. So if Shinshenko spots that, that's gonna go down. Good house walls to keep the aggression out as well. Oh, now moving the archer out to find uh, the other gold spots of Lucas Ducas, I guess. Ah, it's going to hit the berries, which is good as well. Minotaur still at more or less full HP here. No fletching, no bodkin for Lucas Ducas here. That's not going to happen anytime soon either because the um, blacksmith is missing. Tower on the gold, so that's going to keep that side gold safe from archer's fire. But the eco running, eco efficiency running rather low here now. Shenshenko definitely stabilizing here. 11 farms, 4 on gold. Cheaper archers. Uh, should be a convincingly earlier cast late for Shenshenko here. With uh, keeping up the aggression while stabilizing the economy at home. So we're scrambling up a new woodland here for Lucas Lucas. Everything on one woodland here. The men at arms still at large and they get a little bit of a hill advantage as well. Two builders going down now for Lucas Lucas. Four builders lost total. Could it be another one? Is a nice microphone Shenchenko here to uh, focus down that one archer as well. And still the two men at arms alive. It's a fantastic value. Look at the kill count of these guys. Three builders killed by those. Five builders killed by the archers. That doesn't add up actually. <laughs> but. Uh, Yeah, it's a kills total actually, it's not just eco kills, but kills in total. Yeah, fantastic value from just a small group of archers with fletching here and the men at arms, of course. Uh, 
The eco looks all but healthy for Lucas Ducas here. He's scrambling up a house for reasons I don't quite understand here, but he probably needs it for... It's the beginnings of a wall to lead units in towards the TC, maybe. But isn't that a hole, though? Surely that's open. Maybe the house is... Ah, that's open. You can go in here. <laughs> oh, the trap, though! The palisade gates to keep the archers from entering the woodland and no builder just fighting archers with fletching. That's something you never want to risk. So Lucas, Lucas' instant early rush aggression with the Persians sadly doesn't pay off against the Bayans. Here it goes. 1-0 for Shoshenko. Quick look through the stats. Did take an early blow, but um, Lucas, Lucas... Behind because of it, losing one builder to Gaia as well because of the Drush and builder action going on forward. Did lame one Rhino off the Vyans, so that's value. All right, but as we see, the military situation here always always ahead from Shashenko for the feudal age onwards. Fletching archers doing great damage there, 19.7 KD. All right, let's go to a game two and see what they have in store for us for that one. Um, we just saw Mayans Persians. They've been drafting civilizations, so I'm a bit surprised Mayans didn't get banned, to be honest, but uh, they didn't. Now for game two, we have Mongols versus Lithuanians. Surely this has to be a, <laughs> a, a scouts cavalry matchup, but we'll see. After the first game, I don't really know what to expect. Let's keep a keen eye on Lucas Dukas here. It's not the instant barracks. <laughs> so not the instant rush that would be probably be expected at this point from Shenzhenko if he did. Funnily enough, though, the instant rush against the Mongols, that would be a way to de delay their early whatever, if it's scouts or men at arms or archers. But here we go, Lucas Dukas playing as the Lithuanians in the orange here. Nice early scouting here, already found both rhinos, that's great. And uh, the goats a bit outside, but they should be easily found early on. Shenshenko with the Mongols. Solid 1v1. Uh, solid 1v1. Uh, Civilization, of course, as well. Scout, bo scout bonus. Uh, you were hoping for mind games going into game two. I see, I see. <laughs> Maybe a trick is going into expecting a, an instant rush again. Look at this mogul scout bonus. Extra line on side of the Dark Age scout. It just makes the early scouting so smooth. You could use um, sheep and goats on one side and scout on the other, and you have everything covered in no time. And then you could even move forward and lame. Sheep or rhinos of the opponent if you're able to, but uh, Lucas taking the boar nice and early here, that's not going to be an issue. Last three sheep are found, so now Shenchenko is free to move forward and Scout the enemy side, or just move to the back and push in the ostrich to maximize that uh, Mongols faster gathering hunt bonus. Well, it looks like it's moving forward. It's only three and a half minutes, so you'd think there's still potential to snipe a uh, or lay a rhino here, but Lucas Lucas is bringing in the second rhino now, so that's out of the question. Hello there, Vasikli Koikoda. Or basically duo coda, depending on who you ask and are playing against. Are we going to get lucky here? Run right into enemy base? Yep, that's a 5 tile stone that confirms for Shenshenko that this is indeed Lucas Dukas' set. Now don't go running into that TC and lose the scout. Good dodge. 
a little bit thanks to the uh, KOTD Arabia as well, maybe with the <laughs> these uh, carpets showing the town center location. Main gold, nice in the back here for Lucas Dukas, and actually looking at the wood lines here. At least on the left hand side, it's fairly easily secured, the main gold. The right hand side, a bit more open and hilly though, so these hills they've been uh, uh, yeah, annoying a lot of players after this script was introduced. You could have your whole home base in a ditch and uh, always fall victim to the elevation advantage of any enemy unit hopping in. So, <laughs> the unfortunate scouting here for Lucas Lucas only sees three tiles of this stone. That's actually a four tile stone. But yeah, missed the enemy location there and is now scouting the very edges of the map to try and find that Mongols base location to scout what might, might be coming their way. But. Uh, That's not quite where it's headed currently. Is this a late rush or is it the men at arms from Shenzhenko? It's definitely on gold here. Second villager to gold as well. Okay, so this is going to be like a 20, 21 pop men at arms. Which will give the. Wait, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Which will give the Mongols a nice uh, economy. With the 21 pop men at arms, it's easy and smooth. You could easily go 18 pop men at arms with Mongols if you want to, because of the hunt bonus. Uh, but Shinshenko just now pushing in the ostrich, so that early food isn't um, allowing, allowing for quite as fast an uptime. It's going to be a nice men at arms opening regardless, and Lucas Dukas seems to be going to scouts here. 18 pop, here comes the stable. We'll have at least two or three scouts out by the time the Shenzhenko's middle men at arms enter the opponent's base here. See the first scout in the queue, that's going to be at least two while these guys still have 30 seconds to go even for the feud lage. So it, it, <laughs> uh, it's 18 pop to 20 pop here, so uh, generally speaking, if you have three, sorry, four scouts and uh, decent micromanagement skills, you will be able to clean up and uh, trade with uh, three men at arms of the opponent. Looks like the scouts are moving straight forward though, counting on the fact that the Mongols player may not be fully walled at this point in the game. Men at arms now 25 seconds away, and they are of course headed right for the food source here, which is uh, what you should hit when playing against uh, against scouts, because the food eco especially is very fragile when you want to pop out scouts and make your TC produce villagers consistently all the time. That should be a villager kill, I think, for uh, Zhenshenko. If the block is successful here, yeah, definitely, then she goes down. Surely she goes down. Uh, not committing. Takes a little hit to the Men at Arms there. And the uh, scout's counter aggression is on point as well, but Shenshenko already has a Spearman out to defend. One builder goes down though to Lucas Dukas' uh, scout here, so value for Lucas. All the four scouts. Now the range comes up for some archers or skirmishers to clean up the men at arms here. I guess you could make just that one archer with your remaining 50 gold and the rest skirmishers to handle the Mongols archers follow up which should be on its way in not too long. The range not forward though, that's the only way to play one goal. Most players prefer to have uh, some kind of uh, backup army at home, you know. So, I'm not 
sure if I'm in agreement there. But yes, if you're going for the 18 pop-up with the Mongols and the archers, men of arms and archers, I would agree because you need that fluent army follow up. But uh, having the buildings at home, you have the potential of defense if you need to, and you'll also have the builders returning to work nice and uh, smoothly. Look at this shitty woodland. It's not Lucas Lucas' fault. He's placing a lovely camp on this mini woodland in the back here, which is probably his best options now. option now that uh, Shenshenko is still on the forward with the men at arms here. You can't really lumber camp this one or this one. It's just too far away from the TC, that's why he's placing it to the side here. Even if it's uh, going to be inefficient in the long run, it's better than having it exposed to enemy armies and the inevitable archers follow-up that's coming here. Three scouts on the forward here. Lucas Lucas getting another kill here. We'll also focus down one archer, I think, unless Fletching is in here, which it isn't. But uh, TC, garrisoned, two scouts going down. Or... Okay, but... Boop. Down he goes. Looks like the archers, skirmishers, and villagers fought the remaining men at arms of Shenshenko here as well. So it's a 3 2 villager KD. The idle TC is what makes the difference here. It's 117 to 025 here for Lucas uh, Dukas. So Shenshenko effectively at a couple of villagers lead here. Walling towards the edge now for Shenshenko. It's a good while to go on the right hand side here. If you want to go really greedy, you just wall this section here all the way to the woodland and then you have another gold uh, safe within the walls as well. But it makes sense to make them a little bit more localized, even if they would still need to go towards the edge. It makes uh, re-walling easier if you need to. Oh, but this... This has to be an opening, or... Maybe not. Looks very open. Now the archers forward for Shenchenko intercepting Luka Duka, Lucas Dukas' archers on the way. They both have fletching. So the only advantage here is Shenchenko with the double ranges and more numbers. Skirmisher defense, of course. Faster skirmishers for the Lithuanians as well. But they still have the weakness of... Uh, Minimum range, uh, I guess Shenshenko doesn't want to engage against three skirmishers with four archers, understandably enough. Wait, did he actually scout the back gold here? Third gold in the back for Shenshenko, that's in a fantastic spot once you get your walls up. Because you'll have one gold that's so far behind the walls that it's going to stay safe for a long while. And a convenient little... Uh, that was an opening, right? That was a hole, for sure. Ah, oh, he deleted it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Whoa, Magnolia, thanks for the resub. Very much appreciated. This is what. Akalne Omad Akalne Akal Scout Akalne Alkoldner OP Akalne Umut Denise Akalne Angry Housewife Akalne Horn. <laughs> okay. Like, if you say so. How do we get full screen back here? Shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. F11? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, text to speech. It's speech as the emotes as well, but... Alright, fair enough. Let's keep going here. Those alerts are my own recordings. I was messing around with the phone one day, making my own, my own take on the familiar game tunes. Shenshenko, solid mass of units forward now. is demolishing with this forward now. Look at the walls about to complete the home base as well. That's going to render any Lithuanians' mobility useless until they can break through the walls. And, uh, yeah, skirmish defense here for Lucas Lucas, but...
But yeah, and he's chasing the armies away, but the damage has been done. 9 3 for Shinshenko here. Great value. Uh, the players are talking about uh, Lucas Lucas so bad for not patrolling here earlier on when these scouts, uh, sorry, archers ran into each other. With a bit of micro, you could, uh, of course, uh, trade uh, uh, well or just uh, run your archers away to preserve your numbers, but that uh, was an unfortunate and very good, unfortunate event for Lucas Lucas and a very good engagement for Shinshenko. One range for Lucas Lucas here is on the way to the castle. So still pulling up, pulling off that faster castle age here is going to be to the castle age well ahead of Shinshenko, but it's zero, zilch, zero military to twenty one here and a third range going up for Lucas Lucas. Is he going to Lithuanian's cab archers here? I drops that one. Has to commit to skirmishes defense against Shinshenko's masses here, and he has the food and. Uh, Food and uh, would equal to do so, but uh, you need the numbers and you need a heck of a lot of patience here to withstand this pressure. This is going to cause a lot of idle eco time on Lucas Lucas' side until he can muster enough skirmishers to deal with this, which is 12 army units in wait, 19 army units in total, killing more villagers here. And uh... while the earlier cast edge is obviously in many cases a good idea, it's hurting Lucas Lucas a lot here, but just doing his best to survive to the castle age here is uh, plopping up the walls here, but Shinshenko is on point, doesn't want Lucas Lucas to get away here, that walling builder has to bail and the archers will move to the woodland to the side, probably seeing some trees being chopped here as well. Small numbers of skirmishers, no issue, and now Shinshenko is on the way to the castle age as well with 140 to go. Granted, one and a half minutes behind Lucas Lucas, but look at the eco situation here. 45 to 31. Doesn't chase the... or Yeah, he's chasing the builders. It looked like he missed the builders' escape there, but uh, definitely tra tracking the movement as they are trying to pull back towards the TC, I presume. TC going uh, idle for Lucas Lucas for the moment. The skirmisher numbers also lacking. It's only three skirmishers still against Shinshenko's very imminent castle age here. And uh, looks like a cavalry follow up. Follow up. Two stables here to play the mobility and exploit the fact that Lucas Lucas is, uh, has had to go mass skirms to defend and will not be able to make nearly as much cavalry of his own here. And Lucas Dukas also doesn't know about the double stables which are knights in the making. Far away woodland taken by Lucas Dukas, so at least that one is probably not scouted by Shinshenko. Allowed just a couple of knights and these skirmishers are history. Which means Lucas Lucas will have to change plans. I can see how the second TC is going up here, but uh, that's going to limit any army mass for Lucas Lucas here to hold off the pressure from Shinshenko. Skirmishers being dealt with, of course, but yeah, they're both with second TCs here, but Shinshenko not having been hit home nearly as much is uh, with a massive build lead, equal lead already, and should be able to pump out more knights behind this. Could even make camels to deal with small numbers of Lithuanian knights here. Look at the upgrades, plus two, plus one, and only plus one defense for Lucas Lucas. TC all the gold, villagers on gold, and uh, two monasteries here. Going to rely on some conversions, maybe some early relics as well, if to benefit any knights of Lucas Lucas. But here they are, the first wave of knights, and even the remaining archers upgraded to crossbows here. Pikeman defense not an option, it's going to make it a lot harder to go for monks as well, because with the... Alright, I guess the crossbows don't have Fletch, uh, Bodkin, so they won't outrange the monks or match the monks' range, but it's still an issue. It makes quick walling behind the uh, aggression a lot harder as well. And uh, Shinshenko just really keeping up the pressure here. And... Uh... Lucky for Lucas Lucas that this woodland to the side hasn't been spotted. We're approaching twice the builders for Shinshenko here, so in really good control of the game, keeping at least one of the two TCs producing as well. 
Defensive Siege Workshop for Shoshenko here, but the Knights Pass should be able to deal with that. I guess the Monk will get the conversion in here, but now the crossbows dive in and snipe the Monk. Shoshenko 21 mil to 5 here, really keeping these military numbers ahead of uh, Lucas Dukas here. Camels even for Shenshenko here, and uh, looks like Lucas, Lucas managed to get a conversion in on that one, might get another one here, is uh, playing the monks to the best of his ability here, but is still massively behind the numbers and economy. Overall population twice the that of Shenshenko compared to Lucas, Lucas is going to fight on here, try to stabilize, the woodline is, after all, un unpunished here. So, uh, getting market up, trading some resources could help stabilize the situation here. But Shenzhenko now dropping the third TC, extending the economy at home. <laughs> Why would you ever type your Twitch password in chat? <laughs> but uh, it's a nice, uh, nice twist of them to do so. Interesting. Thank you for that power behind with Fuel Cast, you need to only one TC get mill to before adding eco. Yeah, you could say that, but you also need to protect uh, the gold if you want to go monks here like Lucas Lucas is doing. And monks are technically army as well, I guess. So I can understand the investment here, but uh, yeah. If you're behind an eco, you definitely can't take your chances on outmoving the opponent. Monks being sniped yet again here, KD, much in favor of Zinchenko, 59, 60 to 37 here. Now the market is up for Lucas, Lucas will start trading resources, but look at the food count, those theses are going to run idle for a long while until the farm eco can be re-established here, and the constant aggression of the green player is going to make that eco uh, recovery a lot harder. Uh, villagers going down here 26 27 to 3. Shenshin goes 76 to 37 here. Convincing score lead of 1800 points at this stage in the game as well. Monks doing their very best, the old man here, to sway units to join their armies, and they do so. Lol, such a suck up. It's not going to give you the advancement in Arabia Express. Just for fun. That doesn't work on me. <laughs> oh, 19 to 11 now, but how do you... I guess you could sneak a couple of uh, mounted units in here to counter. Do some counter aggression, but the stables are so close here. The ranges, everything is at home. Brzezhenko, just a few units to counter the aggression. Shouldn't be an issue. The builders need Pushenko. What is this? And the armies are matched as well. I have to say that some peculiar walling, <laughs> not walling, not just walling to the edge of the map here, but uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's intentional. If any of Shenshenko's armies run in here to try and uh, sneak in, and you could trap them with a couple of palisade or stone gates over here, so it could be intentional as well. Could be a trap. Monks, crossbows, knights. Lucas Dukas has somehow stabilized a bit here, uh, matching the army numbers, but again, far behind the villagers. Oh, you're fishing for passwords, eh?
Jokes on you, basically, because I don't even remember my Twitch password. Uh, monks. I guess they may or may not have gotten some uh, conversions here, but they are being slow. Oh, yeah, this slaughter. Those poor old men and crossbows on the hill here. Lucas took us down to 13 military to, to 11, 12, 13 for Shenchenko here. But the eco difference means that Shenchenko can easily replenish numbers. Is going into cavalry arches here for more raiding potential as well. Still has some part of woodland to the side here for some reason. But... Easily dealing with the small armies here. More stables going up as well. Could be even light cab here at this point. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense with the monks that Lucas Lucas has been making. The gold is being drained here. I guess there's still <laughs> still lots of gold to go. Also, Shinshenko securing some gold patches to the side here. Extending the map control. Still hasn't found the gold in the back here, which is funny. <laughs> uh, but uh, gold is not of immediate concern. The main gold is about to be depleted, but uh, this one uh, still has a way to go. And what are those walls? That's just funny. Yeah, I commented on, commented on them once already. I think it's just an intentional trap to have Lucas Lucas run in with 20 knights here and then just uh, plop up a couple of gates and we trap everything. And now finally it's found the gold in the back. <laughs> Didn't see the map, you know where the edges of the map are. <laughs> Lucas Lucas now on 3 TZs, 54 healers to 121. I have a distinct feeling that Shenshenko will be the first one to reach Imperial Age here. Right, Cav. This is almost uh, Ubud Benny style uh, AI army at this point. Monk, Spearman, Cab Archer, Light Cab, Knights, Builders. Finally, Bozo as well. You don't have a spec cheat, you don't. True. <laughs> and he's in the chat. You hear a mention of AI army, you can count on Dennis being right around the corner. Ogedai won as he is in my chat. Or any chat, any Twitch chat. 11 knights, light cav in as well if any monks pop out, decide to pop out here. Shenshenko scouting here, still hasn't found this expansion to the side, so this has been a lifesaver for Dukas Dukas. Kind of. Kind of. But the eco is uh, rendered uh, idle again here. And uh, that worker efficiency is just going to drop even further, I think, as TZs are garrisoned and uh, Shinshenko, with the economy is, uh, has running, doesn't really need to worry too much about what's going on. I hear the summons. Are we going full light cap here just for the flex? I mean, they are going to become Mongols Hussar soon enough. Uh, Relic for Lucas Dukas, that's going to be the first one. That seems risky in this massive light cap. Let's see if he makes it. Two Mission Impossible team. He got it! Good monk. Good monk. No step lancers. Yeah, just hard AI. That's some massive scout uh, light cap raid, so and uh, looks like Hussar is easily affordable with Imperial Age kicking in as well. That's probably going to be it. And uh, good luck making the monks against Mongols Hussars. Are you gonna see it? No. We're going to see the GG. And understandably so. Shenchenko takes the 2-0. Flexing with mainly light cap in the end. Lucas Lucas making to the night lights. I never would have guessed this kind of number, but uh, Good work on stabilizing to some extent here and holding on, but the eco difference is just... It's 100 villagers ahead for Shenshenko at this point. Yeah, you don't, you don't uh, recover easily from that kind of situation, uh, no matter how good of a 
combat player you are. Yeah, about twice the economy there for Shenzhenko. Up times, that's the 21 pop mentors. What is 20 or 21? 20 maybe. And then the Lithuanians, 80 pop scouts there. With an almost instant range dealing uh, to some extent with that. Getting good counter aggression in as well. But as the game progresses and Shenzhenko gets that archer follow up rolling, it's awkward for the. Lithuanian's player to deal with uh, investing into a lot of skirms and but uh, it, it comes back to an early engagement somewhere around here as well with archers moving out and uh, trading where was it again I didn't bookmark it but yeah these archers moving out here that was a oh, very unfortunate engagement for Lucas here it's just passing right Shoshenko is on point he's patrolling probably and that's four or five archers down like just Actually, only yeah, four archers now before Lucas Lucas can uh, can react to it. So that's uh, very unfortunate that these weren't on patrol stance. It would be a, it would have been an even fight where Lucas Lucas could even maybe get some counter aggression in. But these things happen. Small things tend to snowball out of control on in Age of Empires 2. GG.